We are not afraid to entrust the people with unpleasant facts. Foreign ideas. Alien philosophies. And competitive values. And now for something completely different. For a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market. It is a nation that is afraid of its people. Completely different. What's going on with the sun? Scientists are puzzled by oddities in the sunspot cycle. Sunspots are by far the most visible of all the phenomena associated with our sun. The Chinese chronicles documented several sightings of dark patches on the sun's face, apparently seen when the sun's light was greatly reduced by clouds and haze, especially around sunrise and sunset, long before the creation of the telescope. The Chinese often referred to these dark areas as flying birds. Galileo was blinded for a week after looking at the sun via his rudimentary telescope in 1610, and his eyesight was permanently impaired. But he came up with a solution, he darkened the room placed his telescope at an opening in the window shutter, and projected the image of the sun onto a sheet of paper, thus, he was safely capturing the image of the sun, and in doing so was able to follow the path of the sunspots. Over several days, they moved across the disk of the sun, vanishing around one edge, and reappearing on the opposite side. Clearly, the sun was rotating on an axis just like Earth. From observations of sunspots, scientists have now deduced that the sun rotates fastest at the equator, taking 25 days for one full turn compared to about 29 days near the poles. Sunspots initially give the impression of being dark, sculptured holes on the face of the sun. On the surface of the sun, called the photosphere, the temperature is around 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 6,100 degrees Celsius. But a sunspot is quite a bit cooler, averaging about 8,000 Fahrenheit, 4,400 Celsius. The sunspot, therefore, appears darker than the surrounding region because it's cooler, and thus gives off less light compared to the rest of the surface. But make no mistake, if you could pluck a sunspot from the surface of the sun, and place it in the sky on its own, it would be dazzling, as bright as a hundred full moons. The dark, irregularly shaped center, or umbra, of a sunspot, can range from about 900 miles, 1,400 kilometers, to over 50,000 miles, 80,000 kilometers, in diameter. This is surrounded by a less dark area called the penumbra, which often more than doubles the size of the sunspot, into which more than 20 Earths could easily disappear. The spots frequently swim through the sea of incandescent gases in pairs, or clusters, they grow rapidly, and then slowly decline. Although astronomers have been studying sunspots for hundreds of years, the exact cause of these spots is still unknown. They have strong magnetic fields, and appear to be giant solar storms, which may be caused by deeper, periodic changes. On September 1, 1859, English astronomer Richard C. Carrington was routinely charting sunspots. 
The solar image in his telescope was filtered to decrease its dazzling brightness, but two brilliant spots of light appeared in one sunspot group. At first, Carrington thought there was a gap in his filter that allowed full sunlight through, but the spots became even brighter. He was the first person to witness a solar flare, a geyser of hot gases on the surface of the sun caused by a sudden release of energy. The magnetic needles in every observation station around the planet, gyrated in a frenzied dance within minutes. Since then, the correlation between solar flares and sunspots has been well established. As a rule, the more spots there are, the more likely big flares are. Immediately after a flare, large streams of electrified particles shoot through space at speeds of 2 million mile per hour, 3.2 million kilometer per hour, or more, colliding with the rarefied gases of the upper atmosphere, which can ignite into a colorful battleground of diffuse shifting, and glowing lights resembling arcs, streamers, and rays the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights. The majority of auroral displays occur near Earth's magnetic poles in the Arctic, although on rare occasions, a particularly massive sunspot or solar flare will stretch its visibility zone into Canada and into Central or even Southern America. But along with this spectacular sky show, such magnetic disturbances can send surges of electricity into Earth's atmosphere, which can black out radio communications, and cause utility company circuit breakers to trip, cutting off power. One such outburst in March 1989, shut down power across Quebec, Canada, for nine hours. The man who discovered the solar cycle was Heinrich Schwaber, of Dessau, Germany. Gradually Schwaber detected a distinct cycle, an 11-year period of increasing and decreasing sunspot activity. Ever since, everything imaginable has been examined for a relationship to the 11-year sunspot cycle the stock market, wars, epidemics, the price of whiskey, and even the fertility of fur-bearing animals in Canada. Do sunspots affect our weather? Some scientists believe they do. In the late 19th century, two astronomers, Edward Maunder and Gustav Sporer, published papers that pointed to a period between the years 1645 and 1715, when sunspots became exceedingly rare. Interestingly, this same 70-year interval, roughly coincided with the middle part of the Little Ice Age, during which Europe and North America experienced much colder than average temperatures. Over the past decade, however, astronomers noticed the sun going through unusually long stretches without any sunspots, even at the most recent solar maximum in 2014, sunspot numbers were 36% below normal. Some think that we might be heading for the start of another prolonged sunspot minimum, similar to the one 375 years ago, and that another spell of unusually cold weather, some call it global cooling, will ultimately result. However, many environmental experts disagree, claiming that the Little Ice Age in the late 17th and early 18th centuries was most likely caused by abnormally high levels of volcanic activity around the planet, blasting huge clouds of ash and dust into the atmosphere. Regardless, it is still a contentious issue. 
The Space Environment Center was renamed the Space Weather Prediction Center in 2007, and it recently added a new, first-of-its-kind space weather forecast model to its toolkit to improve forecasting capabilities and safeguard the United States against space weather threats. The new tool, called the Whole Atmosphere Model Ionosphere Plasmosphere Electrodynamics WAMIPI, Space Weather Forecast Model, will predict how Earth's upper atmosphere responds to solar and geomagnetic storms. It will also help predict total electron content, which is important for communication and navigation systems. The new Neutral Density Field product will aid in orbit prediction and space situational awareness for satellite operators and ground tracking systems. There is no bad weather, just bad preparation, said Jake Bleacher, chief scientist for NASA's Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate. Space weather is what it is, our job is to prepare. Solar activity bottomed out in December 2019, signaling the beginning of a new sunspot cycle, number 25. The current expectation is that, we will reach a maximum around mid-2025. But even for this, not all solar scientists are on the same page regarding how strong it will ultimately become. The general consensus is that, Solar Cycle 25, may have a slow start but, will peak with a sunspot range of 95 to 130. This is well below the average number of sunspots, which typically ranges from 140 to 220 sunspots per solar cycle. So, it appears we'll just have to wait and see what transpires in the months and years to come. But even if it turns out to be a below average solar cycle, that doesn't mean there is no risk of extreme space weather. The sun's impact on our daily lives is real, and is there. We would like to know what you think. So leave us a comment below, and hit the subscribe button for the latest videos from, The Raw News. Don't forget to hit the bell to receive update notifications. As always, thank you for watching. God bless everyone, and remember, the truth is out there, never stop searching. Reality is merely an illusion. What remains is the raw, shocking, humiliating truth at the bottom. And now for something completely different. The truth is out there. Never stop searching. Completely different. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. If it's not the wrong news, it is just news. Subscribe today because I like it raw.